Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I was about to say good evening because we are in a, in a very uh, black atmosphere here. But okay, as my presentation will be uh, a lot about, we are going to speak a little bit about carbon fiber. I suppose that black is the right color for, uh, for that. So they told me that if I push the button, I will have a slide, but no. Ah, it's the, this one, okay. There was two green buttons. OK, so uh, happy to be here with you today. It's, uh, of course, uh, as always, a great pleasure to be at the JEC to, uh, to discuss with a lot of people and to have a chance to meet all this uh, very uh, passionate community about composite material. So today for Arkema, I will present you our solution for uh, uh, high pressure vessels and uh, what we're doing in terms of material, but also in terms of composite for this, uh, for this uh, new family of products. Uh, so my plan of a presentation so that uh, I try to lose as little people as I can. I will start with a, quite a general introduction about our initiative regarding hydrogens and hydrogen economy. Then we'll go layer by layer into the tanks, first speaking about the liners and what we are proposing for our liners. Then speaking about the thermoplastic composite and what we can do for shells with two kinds of solutions, for two types of uh, of tanks, what we are looking for. And finally, I will discuss also a little bit about what we can do to help to monitor the health and safety of uh, these hydrogen tanks using our piezoelectric material uh, that we are developing also in this, uh, in this range of, uh, of applications. And then it should be time for conclusion and uh, possibly some time to answer some of your questions. OK, so regarding uh, Arkema, so um, Arkema is uh, really positioned to develop innovative solutions for sustainable world. For that, we are positioned in three main segments of activity. First one is adhesive solution, that is also uh, quite well known for uh, some uh, application under the brand name Bostic. We are also developing a range of, uh, of, uh, of resins for coating solutions, for paints, that we are developing for uh, main uh, paints and coating manufacturer. And we are also very active in the advanced material with a range of unique uh, polymers that we are developing uh, uh, in, uh, in Arkema. And, uh, this is a little bit where I will bring the spotlight today in Arkema activity. Regarding R&D, so we have more than 1,000 people, uh, uh, 1,600 people worldwide uh, working as researchers on the different uh, uh, applications we are developing in Arkema. We have a R&D which is focused on five platforms. Platforms, of course, linked to our uh, today's challenges. One platform about new energies where we are developing solutions, a lot of things for electrochemistry and batteries those days. Uh, we are also developing solutions for electronics, where we have uh, also f a, a broad range of uh, applications which are, which are developing. Of course, a big topic of those days is to develop, and we are well placed for that in Arkema, uh, some natural resources management. Uh, we are also a platform uh, dedicated to living comfort and uh, home efficiency. And finally, we have a platform dedicated to material, and especially lightweighting and design of new material to go into structural uh, application, and this is again where I will put the focus today in my, uh, in my presentation. So regarding uh, uh, hydrogen, so hydrogen is, a, is, a, is of course a, a, a domain which is under development today, which will be a, a technology which will be a, a, an energy vector which will be necessary to assume the energy transition. Uh, in terms of uh, materials, Arkema is positioned rather to work on the mobility segment. So that's why uh, we are developing solutions to address thermoplastic recyclable tanks, uh, whether it's type 4 or type 5 tanks, and what we can do for that for car, truck, buses, trains, and trailers. We are also developing uh, 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 materials and polymers for, uh, for fuel cells, and especially for membranes, and for the coatings, and the, and the material for the bipolar plates of uh, the fuel cells. And finally, as I said in my introduction also, uh, we think that some piezoelectric sensors could make a lot of sense into the, the, the monitoring of high pressure vessels. And we are also very happy to have been selected uh, to become a partner uh, of the M2H, at the, of the important project of common, common European interest, IPSEI I2Tech, which is uh, the first uh, uh, important project in Europe on hydrogen, where we are focusing with uh, 50 colleagues all around Europe on uh, what is called I2Tech, so the technology to make hydrogen uh, solution happening into, uh, into, uh, into our uh, onto our continent here in Europe. Okay, so 
this was for the general introduction. So now let's go a little bit deeper into to some key topics. So of course, to start with, when discussing about uh, uh, hydrogen tanks, uh, let's talk first about the first layer of hydrogen tank, which are the liners. So for that, we have developed some solution using our unique um, polyamide 11 um, kind of range of material, uh, known under the brand name Rilsan. It's a polyamide that we are developing for, uh, for more than 30 years into, uh, into transportation application for automotive industry, but also with a lot of application also in the oil and gas. It's a polyamide which is 100% bio-based. It's uh, derived from a castor oil. Uh, this is a polymer which is uh, where we know quite, grow, quite interesting growth was last year's and for which we are launching new capacity in Singapore. So to be able to, uh, to, to extend our capacity of production in terms of monomer, but also in terms of polymer. This is of course as a bio-based product, this is a product which is bringing some advantage in terms of carbon footprint. I uh, will come back onto that. And this is also a range of products where we are developing specific recycling activity. We have made in 2021 the acquisition of AG+, so to be able to recover our uh, products from scrap of production or from uh, left outs, and to be able to recondition those products into new products uh, in, in a true circular uh, economy that we are developing with the help of um, AG+, in Italy, to, to make some uh, new material uh, qualified for new application. So, as I said, uh, polyamide 11 is made from a castor plant, and then we, 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 we are harvesting uh, the, the castor beans from the castor plant. So these are, these are, these are plants which are, we have no competition with, uh, with uh, food, so, uh, which is a growing in area, uh, uh, almost desertic area in the, in the world. So we extract the castor oil out of that, and from this castor oil, we are able to synthesize first the monomer of polyamide 11, and then we are polymerizing it to, meet, to make the by polycondensation to make the polyamide 11. So uh, compared to our traditional range, for instance, of PA12 material, which are developed from, uh, from fossil, uh, from fossil uh, uh, sources, we are able to have a 70% abatement in terms of uh, LCA, in terms of uh, carbon footprint with this material, partially because this is a, a non-fossil uh, resources, so coming from uh, abiotic resources, biogenic resources, but also because we are uh, today uh, revamping our installation to, uh, to use uh, more uh, green energy to make uh, to, 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 to food in our chemical processes. And we have started some biomethane uh, 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 eating system in some of our plants to be able to reduce, again, the carbon footprint of this uh, material. So with that, we are able to, uh, to, to make different grades of the material. So uh, we are able to make um, polyamide 11 grades, which, will be, uh, uh, which can be used in uh, auto molding but also blow molding could be also used in, in extrusion or even injection molding and welding for some type of liners. And uh, we think that we have a quite balanced range of properties, so meaning uh, a low H2 permeation compared to most of the uh, polymer today, but it's not the best one in terms of permeation, but uh, we have a balanced properties with also a low moisture uptake. This is a long chain polyamide, so, uh, which is less sensitive than the traditional PA6, PA66 uh, polyamide in terms of, uh, of moisture absorption. It's also impact resistant. The specific uh, uh, organization and crystallization of P11 is making it quite unique in terms of uh, low temperature uh, ductile performance. And finally, you can also uh, process quite big parts with that. We have been uh, happy to be able to produce large liners by blow molding, thanks to the melt strength of the polyamide 11. So again, good material already uh, uh, available and already present in some tanks which are on the road today and uh, we are experiencing good, uh, good feedback on this, on this material which is developed. So this was for the liner side of my, my presentation. Let's go to the next chapter, as I said, layer by layer. So let's go to the thermoplastic composite for the shell of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a hydrogen tank this time. So before going into the real application we are targeting, a brief overview of the family of uh, composite thermoplastic that are developed by Arkema. So we are clearly focused on thermoplastic composite, uh, starting with a very high performance composite for aerospace application, like our Kepstan PKK material, polyether ketone ketone material, that we are developing mainly for aerospace application. And when we have a specific collaboration, for instance, with some partners like Excel, to develop it for, uh, for aerospace. We have also some specific collaboration for the oil and gas industry, where we are developing some uh, PVDF this time, so fluorinated polymer under brand name Kainar, 
which are developed for oil and gas industry with, uh, in collaboration with an American company called Barde in the joint venture, which is Barflex. And we are developing on our own some solution for the transportation market with our polyamide material again. So uh, uh, Rilsan, which is our traditional P11 material, but also Rilsan matrix, which is a, a PPA derived from a P11 uh, polymers and which is offering a higher temperature resistance compared to our traditional polyamide. And we have developed also, I will come back on that, a specific process to make unidirectional tape uh, which sold under the brand name UDX. And finally, the last family of, uh, of uh, technical polymer we are offering to the composite industry is helium, which is quite a unique uh, product, helium, because it's a liquid uh, uh, resin that you can use in most of the traditional uh, composite process. But at the end, it's an acrylic resin with a thermoplastic behavior and thermoplastic properties. And here we are targeting a lot of application into uh, wind energy for the wind blades in terms of transportation, but also marine industry to have, uh, we have some success and we'll have a presentation, uh, I think tomorrow with Beneteau to uh, for first application of uh, helium for boats. And also we have a nice development in building infrastructure and sport and leisure with this uh, range of material. So always a little bit difficult to find back ourselves between all those family of, uh, of composite thermoplastic. Uh, why we have done that, and uh, this slide is trying a little bit to explain uh, what was the philosophy or when we, we, are, we begin to develop those thermoplastic composites. You know, generally speaking, when you develop thermoplastic composites, you have to, uh, to deal with the viscosity of the polymer to have a good impregnation of the fibers. And for that, finally, you have two ways to handle the, 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 the issue, and we are uh, working on the two ways. One way is to work at the molten stage, so to have a, a way to... Uh, to, uh, to, to, to impregnate the fibers in the molten stage, but with high performance polymer, it's becoming difficult. That's why we need here to make some, uh, what we call semi-finished product with tapes, to have specific and dedicated processes to be able to impregnate with very good uh, level the fi carbon fibers or glass fibers to have a very good uh, consistency with our tape. The other way to do it is then to start uh, with helium, helium which is a uh, uh, typically, uh, the polymer uh, of the uh, acrylic polymer, which is uh, diluted into the monomer. So at the end, you've got a product which is completely liquid, uh, like a traditional thermoset, epoxy, or polyester uh, resin. And then you can uh, use it uh, and, um, and uh, manage the chemical reactions, the polymerization reaction, while you are producing the part in traditional processes like RTM, SMC, or whatever kind of uh, process. So in, with helium, we are able to enter into most of the traditional application of thermoset composite, but with a thermoplastic. And with a UDX tape, we are rather targeting high performance polymer with a semi-finished product, which will be also easier to use into a very automatized process with ATL, AFP, and of course, uh, winding, which is also one technology which is using tape and which is giving a high interest those days to use more and more tapes to manufacture more performant products. Then, Applying these two range of solutions to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, hydrogen tanks, we went to two types of solution. One, you can almost call it a kind of drop-in solution where you replace a traditional epoxy resin by helium. Uh, so you use the same machine, the same winding machine, the same open bath, and the same way of wetting the carbon fiber into a, into a liquid resin, which is helium in this time. And you are winding this uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, impregnated with the uh, helium resin on a on on liner, a uh, real sand liner, and to, uh, to, to, to be able to make, uh, at the end, a type 4 hydrogen tank, but uh, with, a, with a thermoplastic composite, which will constitute the shell of the tank. Another way to do it is to use tapes. And in that case, you are no more in the wet filament winding process, but you are remo much more in the tape winding process, where you will remelt the polymer, which has been... Uh, incorporated and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, incorporated into the carbon fibers to make the tapes. You can heat up the material with a laser or with infrared, and we're investigating different way technology for that. So to be able to remake the polymer and to be able to wind it. And as you wind it on a polymer, polyamide, which has the same nature, you have a kind of uh, cohesion and you are much more going in the direction of a type five so it could be, a, 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 let's say, a, still a kind of a tightness layer with a pure polymer layer on the inside, but also we are working to even completely 
eliminate this, uh, this, uh, with, uh, this tightness layer and to have the tightness directly done by the composite material going to the real type 5, which is no more a liner into, uh, into, into the tank. So these are the two technologies we are developing, and I will elaborate a little bit more on these two technologies for thermoplastic composite tank. So first with helium, so I will not come back on that, I already described what is helium. It's liquid, it's reactive, it's thermoplastic, it's recyclable, and it's able to enter into a lot of different processes which are used today in industry. You can make infusion uh, for large parts, like wind blades, like boats. You can make casting for uh, sanitary, for claddings. You can make pultrusion to make a profile, to make a rebar for, uh, for, the, for the building industry. You can use, let's say, the very traditional process of manufacturing uh, composite parts like SMC or RTM with compression RTM also, which is possible to use with helium. And finally, filament winding. And on filament winding, you can guess that a little bit on the picture. We have a, a way to manage the chemical uh, uh, reaction and the, and the polymerization of helium, which is also unique because we are using, in that case, a dual cure system, so we are using UV lamps, UV initiator to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to begin the reaction and to monitor the reaction uh, while, while winding the tank. So this is a little bit uh, what we are doing today in terms of uh, processing for helium for a composite tank. So we have a chance to work with uh, our partners in the southwest of France Technical Center, uh, Canoe. We are um, using a, a traditional winding machines with open bath. We are using our C599 resin, which is quite well adapted to, uh, to the performance needed for uh, hydrogen tanks. We are using, as I said, a photo-initiator at the peroxide, so it's a real dual cure system. And with this uh, photo-initiator associated with the right peroxide, we are able, with uh, neon tubes placed, placed around the, the, the composite cylinder at the right place, we are then able to, uh, to manage the chemical reaction and to, to, to make it faster. Today, so we are decreasing the, with that the, the curing time uh, to one hour or less than an hour. And even in our development, we are targeting to have no curing time at all, so to be able to, at the end of the, of the winding, to have a tank which should be completely uh, polymerized and, uh, and ready for the next step of, uh, of manufacturing. Uh, this is where we stand today in terms of uh, processing with uh, helium for the, for the wet winding of uh, composite uh, tanks. In terms of characteristics of the material, so here I highlighted two, uh, two results we get from, uh, from um, uh, academic centers we are working for. First uh, comparison made between helium and epoxy was made by uh, Nanyang University in Singapore, where globally what you, you can say with this chart is that we have more or less the same mechanical properties compared to epoxy in terms of uh, strength modulus, uh, whether it's tension or flexural, uh, also ILSS, it's uh, very similar. We have a little bit, uh, we have, a, we are maybe, um, thanks to uh, the thermoplastic nature of helium, we have a, a better fracture toughness and a structural damping, and uh, also which is leading to a, a loss factor, which is more important. So uh, interesting to have a structure which will be uh, more stable in terms of impact and resistance to, uh, to, to, to shocks. And on the other charts, which, which has been achieved by uh, Anyang University, uh, Professor A in South Korea, in, uh, in Seoul, uh, he worked on the ring specimen to characterize uh, the carbon fiber associated with helium. So you see the kind of level of strength we are achieving with a carbon fiber content, which is uh, a little bit above 50%. So we are at 2,100, uh, 2,200 uh, megapascal in terms of strength. And uh, of course, at high temperature, you have a decrease of that. But you see that even beyond the TG, the traditional TG for helium is around uh, 100 degrees Celsius. So even 120, we still have a descent to strength. So meaning that the, the product is able, of course, to, um, to, uh, to reach uh, and to have a good behavior at temperature at 85 degrees Celsius, which is the traditional temperature, high temperature for, uh, for a composite uh, high pressure vessels those days. In terms of recyclability and sustainability, as I said, so uh, uh, helium first uh, in the way to, uh, to address that is, uh, is a high performance material. So, of course, first goal is to reduce the use of materials thanks to its high performance. Then, uh, due to its acrylic nature of uh, helium, we can, uh, we can recycle it the chemical way by depolymerization. So by heating the, the parts at 400 degrees Celsius, you are able to depolymerize it. So first, it's enabling us to, uh, to, to, to bring back the, the carbon fiber or glass fiber, depending on the, on the application. And then we have a, 
kind of thermolysis. So where we are using, uh, we have at the end of a process a kind of thermoly thermolysis oil. And uh, by distillating this oil, we are able to come back to the monomer. And as it is the monomer, so globally, uh, methyl metacrylate, we are able with this monomer to come back to a new formulation for helium and to make a new, uh, a new, a new resin uh, ready to, to make new, uh, new parts. So it's really a, a recycling solution with a kind of upcycling. And because it's still a thermoplastic, we should not forget that, it's also possible to have mechanical recycling. So to be able to grind the part at the end of life or to grind the, the residue of the scrap from the, from the production and to incorporate this uh, scrap and residue into a new, uh, new, uh, new matrices like ABS, polycarbonate, to make, uh, to make, um, to make compound uh, with a very high performance because in that case, helium is acting as a very good, uh, very good uh, kind of uh, uh, weighting of the fibers, so to have a very good addition between the fibers and the polymer, and it's leading to very nice performance for the recycled compound uh, made from this uh, mechanical recycling. And we are working beyond that uh, at European scale on a project called CIDER for the automotive industry, so to see how with different partners we can recover some uh, uh, end-of-life, uh, uh, for instance, hydrogen tanks to make new parts, new uh, semi-structural parts for automotive industry using uh, helium. Okay, so this was for helium used as a thermoplastic uh, liquid solution for, uh, for hydrogen tanks. And now let's, go, let's come back to, uh, to UD tapes. So to go to this type five kind of tanks where we will have a complete cohesion and a monolithic structure between the liner or between the tightness layer, I could say, and the, and the, and the polymer from the composite to make new type of uh, hydrogen tanks. So UDX tapes, what is it? It's a thermoplastic, again, because we are using here the, the whole range of family of product, uh, high performance polymer uh, produced by Arkema. So our polyamide 11, Rilsan, our polyphthalamide with a TG which are above uh, 140 degrees Celsius called Rilsan matrix. Uh, we can use also our PKK material uh, that we are developing for aerospace. And we can use also a PVDF material with a very good uh, iner inertia to chemical uh, environment. Uh, thanks to the process, which is very specific and very innovative for UDX tape, we are able to reach high fiber content, a typical uh, uh, fiber content we can reach with carbon fiber in terms of fraction in volume is uh, above 60%, it could be 62, 63% of carbon fiber. And uh, it's a quite a productive process because if we found a way to have a good uh, impregnation with the powder at the beginning of the process and to have a, a good way to, uh, to, uh, to have a nice, uh, nice uh, impregnation of the fibers with this uh, process to make tapes. So typical uh, uh, behavior of this different type of polymer we are using for UDX tapes. So you see the typical curve uh, DMA curve for P11, PPA. So you see that the transition temperature are quite close huh, uh, for PPA uh, real sound matrix. We have, as I said, a TG around 140 degrees Celsius. And for PKK, it's 160 degrees Celsius, so we are quite close. Of course, PKK, after uh, this uh, transition, uh, has still a very high resistance above 300 degrees Celsius. So this is why it's making it's, uh, the materials of choice for very demanding application in aerospace. The PPA could be a very interesting option for high temperature uh, uh, applications. Uh, uh, and on top of that, those polyamide, whether it's P11 or PPA, they are quite stable in terms of properties, even in a wet environment. You see some uh, curve we have measured for the moisture effect on PPA material, where you see some little difference in the, on the neat resin. And when you work at the composite scale with a carbon fiber, you see almost no difference between a wet product and a, and a dry product using uh, our PPA uh, material. So some basic properties of uh, and of a UDX tape using a polyamide 11 and, and polyphthalamide. You see that we are in between 2.3 to 2.7 gigapascal in terms of strength for this material with a ratio of carbon fiber in that case, which was 53%. So this is demonstrated that we have a, a good carryover of the load between the fiber and the polymer to reach this level of, uh, of strength on the, on the polymer. And we are able to sustain, especially with polyphthalamide, this level of strength above 85 degrees Celsius and also with uh, high ductility, this is also why we are using thermoplastic, is to have du good ductility of the polymers, uh, which is shown here in the IPS, ILSS performance that you have here. And in terms of uh, processing, as I said, we are developing some process for winding, which could be with laser. We see some 
trials we made here with AFPT to make some tubes, but also uh, we work with infrared and we are working with different technology for heating because this is, a, of course, a key aspect of uh, being able to be at the same time productive and at the same time to get the best out of the material we are using to make uh, winding with uh, thermoplastic tapes. So finally, all those results uh, uh, will go in a project we have uh, now with different partners, a project which is uh, led by Air Liquid to uh, manufacture some Type 5 hydrogen tanks with a thermoplastic polymer in a European project called Road, Road Trips. So Road Trip is about uh, being able to manufacture hydrogen tanks for uh, uh, new composite cylinders for trailers. One of, the, one of the challenge for Air Liquid is to be able to have a payload on the trailer to refill, uh, to fill up the, the, the refueling station for hydrogen of 1.5 ton uh, with a 700 bar uh, tubes. And uh, of course, to have the possibility to have a recyclable thermoplastic material and to get all the benefit of having a solution type five without a liner, which will uh, enable to have a new performance for, uh, for these hydrogen tanks for, the, for, uh, for refueling the, the station. Okay, so I'm coming to the last part and already the red light is tilting, so I'm late, I'm late, so sorry again, Piezotech is always coming at the end and always I'm in a rush to present Piezotech things. So for my Piezotech colleagues which might be in the room, sorry for that, I will rush on that. Uh, so uh, what is Piezotech and what are uh, uh, our material here? Here we have developed a new range of material known, uh, under the brand name Piezotech, which are uh, piezoelectric materials, so no need to explain you what is a piezoelectric material, it is a a material which is converting mechanical or thermal energy into electricity, so giving signal. It's also acting the other way around. When you put some electricity into a material, you, get some, you can generate some movement of some, uh, or some heat or cooling, depending the way you use it. Uh, so Piezotech FC, it's a range of copolymer we have developed to, uh, for this application in a piezoelectric material. It's a copolymer which, which we are able to print uh, on different kinds of substrates. And so with that, we are able to build uh, piezoelectric sensors, which are customizable because we can have a, the flexibility of very thin product. You need only a few, uh, a few micron of, uh, of piezotech products so to be able to make a, a good sensor. And, uh, and then we are able to, to put that in different environments. And our challenge today is to be able to put it into composite structure like hydrogen tanks so with an array of these uh, piezotech sensors, which will be printed onto a flexible PCB uh, attached to a, to a, to a tank and then able to monitor all the, all the kind of event which could happen in the composite material. We think about this solution for composite because one of the applications we are very proud of with these piezotech materials is, uh, is microphone for electric guitars. So it's a very sensitive material to acoustic wave. And of course, acoustic emission is of course one way of course uh, which is used today in composite to, uh, to monitor the, the, the health of composite. So uh, we are developing solutions which we think could work even in a passive way. So compared to traditional uh, uh, ceramic, uh, piezoelectric ceramic, uh, first we are flexible, so able to adapt to the shape, and we need uh, very few signals to have a, a, good, uh, a good localization of the, of the defect and being able to uh, secure the, the tank, to have a safe approach, and even to be able in the future, because it will request a lot of work on the, on the regulation side, so to be able to put less carbon fiber in the material enabling the same level of safety for the tank in the end. This is the final goal, of course, it will take time, but this is uh, what we are targeting in the end. Okay, I'm three minutes over the, my speech, so I need really to go to the conclusion. My conclusion is very simple because you just need to read the LCS study I love, which has been made by ADEM, a French organization in 2020. This LCA is comparing different kinds of vehicles and different ways of, prop of propelling the vehicle. So you compare diesel battery electric vehicle and the fuel cell electric vehicle. Of course, the first chart is just telling you that if your hydrogen is coming from SMR, no way. There is absolutely no interest to make a vehicle with a, with a steam methane reforming. So you need green hydrogen to make a, a decent uh, saving in terms of CO2 um, using hydrogen. But then even with a, with, uh, with, uh, with that in mind, we still have a, an issue on the manufacturing of the vehicle itself, because when you compare diesel even to battery electric vehicle today, or fuel cell electric vehicle, we still have some negative points li li uh, linked to the battery, uh, the material you need to make the battery, but also linked to the fuel cell, for the fuel cell electric vehicle, to the material you use for, for the tanks, 
of a material like platinum, which is used for catalysis in the fuel cell. And finally, the conclusion given by this study is just giving us our roadmap, uh, because it's good to remember that uh, to be a really, uh, uh, to have a really a, a very, uh, a very coherent approach in terms of uh, saving uh, CO2. First, we need to think about light weighting, because the more weight we are saving, the less material we are using, so the less energy we are using to process the material, so we are saving on every aspect. And of course, during the life of a mobile, of a vehicle, whether it's a plane, a train, a boat, or whatever, you reduce the energy consumption with that. Then we must also remember that uh, uh, we need to reduce the, the use of material which has a high impact of our environments, like carbon fibers, like the lithium or the cobalt in the batteries, or the platinum for the fuel cell. And of course, something which is obvious, but sometimes we have a trend to forget, is that we need to make to have long-lasting materials because if the same vehicle, you use it 300,000 kilometers of, instead of 200,000 kilometers, the math here is very simple, but you, lose, you use in the end for the same usage, one third uh, less resources uh, needed for the same vehicle. And finally, in the end, we should recycle and think about the end of life and also recycling the, the production scrap. This will uh, help to bring fuel cell vehicle, but also battery electric vehicle at the same range or even below the range of today, uh, traditional vehicle in the automotive industry or other kind of industry which are to come. I thank you for listening to me and I'm open for some questions. No question at all. It's finished. It's finished. But I attend the show for the two coming days. So any question, any, uh, any things you want to discuss with me, you are welcome on Arkema Booth. And maybe the most important information of my speech, tomorrow evening, you are invited for, uh, for, uh, for our uh, cocktail. So uh, you are all welcome to come for a cocktail and also to discuss about material for hydrogen. Thanks you very much.